I'm like out of breath. <laughs> I need to chill. Okay. My name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 10th episode of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, March 19th, and I'm recording a day early for a couple reasons. One, I did not get to record a podcast last week because I was on spring break. I'm a teacher and we went to Disney World and I'll talk about that if you're interested more at the end of the episode. Um, but the other reason is that my sister, who's a high schooler, she's a senior, she's on spring break this week and she lives in Tennessee. So my mom and my sister are gonna come visit us and they come tomorrow. So I knew <laughs> I knew I couldn't keep them like, say, hey, be quiet for 30, 45 minutes while I record my podcast and then while I edit it. So. I just decided I would record a day early, but you're still getting it on Thursday, just like normal. So, oh my gosh, I, my heart is like racing right now. Um, you could help, you could tell my voice just then, not weird. I think it's just been a very busy um, time coming back from the break and the big event being that my mom and sister are coming tomorrow. So we, um, even though we got back from our trip to Disney World last week on Friday, we actually haven't stayed at our home here yet because we were watching my mother-in-law's dog and our dog and we just decided to stay over at her house because she's got a big house with a big yard and plenty of room for two dogs. So we haven't even stayed at our own house yet. Um, so yeah, I'm. this is the first night that we'll be staying at our house and like 10 days or something. So yeah, there's some chores that need to be done and I will be doing those soon. Um, but let's talk about knitting. So, wow, this looks a hot mess. Sorry guys. So this is my Half Moon Oracle, Half Moon Oracle shawl maybe. And the pattern is by Kristen. I think her last name is Lear maybe, but it's Kristen who is the owner of the Bull and Vine Yarn Company. Now the yarn that I used is Graceland Wool, I believe, and I'll make sure to put it down here. Um, but Graceland Wool is Sarah Stevens and she does these Harry Potter clubs. And so I don't remember, this was last year at some point, maybe in the fall, um, but these are all Harry Potter colorways. And I know that this one was Happy Birthday, Harry. And in the skein, you can tell even more, but it's got like the green from the cake, uh, the writing on the cake and everything. It's really cute. The pink was called Yule Ball. And then the purple was a really cool color. It was called the Pensive Memory. And each skein was different. Like everyone got a slightly different skein. Mine was Pensive Memory, I think 21. I don't know why I remember that, but yeah, so I used these Harry Potter colorways together to make the Half Moon Oracle shawl. And it's, I find wearing a, pie, a half pie shawl a little challenging. I actually did wear it like this today at one point when I was outside because it was colder than I thought. Let's see if I can turn around for you. It's really beautiful. So pretty. And most of the time I just wear it like a scarf. <clears throat> But it doesn't really like, it doesn't really like a, do like a triangular scarf. You kind of have to flip it and then loosen it so it's not strangling you. But I think it's really cute. So that's what I'm wearing. And I have some finished objects. Now, my first finished object, I can't show you live because it has already been shipped off to the charity that it's going to. And that is my blanket for Warm Up America. So I'm gonna put a video in here of past self talking about that blanket. All right, I wanna show you my finished blanket before it ships off today. I'm literally about to go to the post office like right after this video. Um, but this is my Warm Up America Crochet Challenge blanket for 2019. Every year, Brittany of Be Hooked Crochet 
has designed a crochet blanket for charity. Now, Warm Up America is the like umbrella charity and they pick, I guess with Brittany, they pick different organizations that they send these blankets to. So this year it's a veterans, or it's a military hospital. Um, so the colors are red, white, and blue. Now, this was so much fun. I This is only my second year doing it. Last year, I um, we did like a bobble blanket and I think the blankets went to a children's home or like an organization that builds beds for children. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but we made the cutest blanket with bobbles and it really stretched me and improved my crochet skills. And this one was no different. So we did these super cool, super long stitches. I think you yarn over, you did like seven yarn overs or something crazy. And then it's striped and then it just had a simple border. This is a free pattern if you want to get on and make some um, crochet blankets for another charity, a charity of your choice, you can definitely do that. I use Vanna's Choice um, in three different colors. I think the only one I can remember is Colonial Blue. And then, I mean, this is just like bright white and like red. I, I don't remember. I do have them linked on my Ravelry page if you want to go there. And that link is below. Um, I just got this out of the dryer. I wanted to wash and dry it before I sent it off for a couple of reasons. One, I've been carrying it around with me everywhere. Um, inevitably, it had some toaster hair in it, so definitely needed to wash that. Um, but also, I was a little concerned about the red and the white being next to each other, if that would the red would bleed, and it didn't bleed at all. So way to go, Lion Brand. Um, their Vanna's Choice seems to be very color fast, at least in the colors that I used. And then I am not um, a fan of the way that acrylic fills when you machine wash and dry it, except I learned a secret. If you put in an extra um, dryer sheet, it'll really soften things up. So normally, like with a load of clothes or whatever, I just use one dryer sheet. But if you put in two, three, if you're feeling crazy, I did two today, it softens right back to where it was when you first were working with that yarn. So let me back up and show you. This is a lap size blanket. It's a good size though for a lap size blanket. Nice and big. And even though it has like these holes in it, which like you're definitely gonna get caught in here, it's surprisingly warm. I think because it kind of has these like back and forth layers. So it kind of traps air and it stays pretty warm. Plus since it's a lap blanket, hopefully you won't have your feet on it anyway because you'll just have it thrown over your lap. But I'm so happy to have this done. Can't wait to ship it off and now I'll put you back over to present slash future Natalie to see the rest of my knits. All right, so I'm sure I talked about this, but that blanket was just so much fun and I am so excited to do it again next year. It'll be a different pattern, different blanket, and a different society that it's going to. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about how that turned out and I was really pleased that I was able to wash and dry it with no bleeding um of the colors because it was red white and blue so that was a really good thing i also finished one other project this week and it's my february socks so i can finally stop talking about these but these are uh vesper or nidalee things vesper sock yarn one of her rainbow of the month clubs and i finally got these done i think i finished them the night before we left two weeks ago and then i just blocked them the other day um, but I ended up putting in a sparkly gold heel. I think I put maybe, not like I'm counting them, maybe 60 rounds on the cuff. And then, I, or I'm sorry, on the leg. I did a short cuff because I did these from the toe up and I wanted the cuff to be entirely orange and not start striping again. So that worked out really well. I really like these. I made them in my size. I've been really terrible this year about making gifts for other people for Christmas. What I did last year is I planned out to make a Christmas gift every month. And most of those were socks for my mom, mother-in-law and sister, cause they really like socks. So I think maybe I need to start doing that because all I've done is make socks for myself this year. And we're already past time when we can wear them here in Texas. 
it's uh, like 70 degrees right now and it's supposed to be 70 all week. So yeah, we're done. It's the knitted socks need to go away. Actually, I have an idea of what I could do with my knitted socks like between seasons because if you live in a warm climate like we do here, I'm probably only wearing my socks like two months, maybe three months of the year. Um, so yeah, I have an idea of how to like display them so I can enjoy them more than just those times. So we'll see if that comes to fruition and I will share that with you. Okay, so those are my two finished objects and I've got two whips going right now. So since I finished my February socks, I started my March socks and I got to show the yarn before I left on my trip to Disney because this is Disney yarn. I'm gonna slide these socks off because I've got one finished already. Um, but let me show you the yarn. Let me get the sock on and then I'll show you the yarn. And then I'll show you one sock that I got finished. It's hard to put a sock on a sock blocker when it's not uh, blocked yet. Okay, so this yarn is from Malia Made It. Um, Malia is so awesome. She is a super talented dyer, as you can see she dyes self-striping yarn, plus she winds these gobstopper balls, plus she puts these markers on here that match your yarn that you ordered, which is so cool. Um, but this color is called Disney Princess Parade, and my mini skein was the Cinderella mini skein, which is this one. Okay, so last time I tried to guess what the colors were in the stripes, and I did a really awful job. My husband, who is um, not here right now, but he was sitting upstairs the last time I was recording, and he was like, you didn't know what the purple princess was or something. He's like, it's this, duh. Like, he, I told him he should have just shouted down here and told me what it was. <laughs> okay, so I have still not gone to talk to Malia about the colors, but we know that this one's Cinderella. I think pink is like Aurora, Sleeping Beauty. The red, I'm like, maybe it's Snow White. I'm pretty sure this yellow is Belle. This limey green looks like Tiana to me. This green, I'm kind of torn between like uh, Ariel or Tinkerbell. I don't know. I know she's not a princess, but only Anna is a princess anyway. <laughs> um, I think this like tealy green, which is hopefully showing up for you, it's, it's more distinguished in person. I think that's Jasmine. And then we know this is Cinderella. And then the purple that I couldn't remember before is, I'm forgetting again, I think Rapunzel. So any, it doesn't matter what they're supposed to be because I love how they are anyway. Um, it does matter. I want to know what they're supposed to be, but whether I'm getting them right or wrong, I still love how it's turning out. So I use my mini for the cuff, the heel, and the toe. I did a short cuff because I was casting these on before a movie. <laughs> So we went to see Captain Marvel the night before we left, which was a stupid idea because we didn't get home till like one in the morning. And then we had to get up at like five, which was not very smart. But I needed to finish the cuff and then get a couple rounds in on the stockinette before the movie started so I could knit during the movie. So I ended up with like a 12 round cuff, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I think it turned out really beautiful. I got the colors to balance pretty well without making a super duper long leg. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out and we only have a couple weeks left in March So I really want to get the second sock done and I've already started it. I did a ton. Uh, I, I knit on these socks while we were walking around um, Not walking around but waiting in line at Disney and I'll talk more about that too Because I did encounter a little bit of an issue when I was knitting there, which I never have at Disneyland So it's interesting, but I've got this super cute progress keeper. It was just a charm that I bought when we were at Disneyland and I turned it into a progress keeper. So yeah, I am loving those. Those are my March socks. And again, I made them in my size, which my mom, her feet are smaller than me by a little bit, just a little. And my mother-in-law's feet are larger than me by like uh, less than half an inch. And then my sister's feet are not the same size as mine either. So when I make socks in my size, they really can only go to me. So, oops, I really like these. My other whip, oh, I'm just, 
adoring it right now. So this is a test knit for Jen of Webster Street Knittery. Um, and it is a gorgeous wrap. It's gonna be massive, it's rectangular, and it is looking so beautiful. It's got lots of lace in it. I think I wanna change out my stitch marker. I had this cookie in there, but I think I'm gonna change it. Yeah, for something else. Okay, so look, y'all. So I know I said it's rectangular, and it will be. You just start out with a triangle. Let me get on my knees for a second. This pattern is not out yet. This is still in testing stages, but I think it will come out soon. So yeah, we've got this beautiful triangle, and now I am working on this side of the wrap. So just look at that lace pattern. Isn't that pretty? It's not super difficult at all. Very repetitive, which is nice because even though it's repetitive, you're still changing the stitch pattern between garter and lace. You're changing your color. It's really a lot of fun. So this main color here is Suburban Stitcher and it's her predictability color. This is the color that I sought after when I went to the Hook and Tree Weavers retreat and I was so happy to snag three skeins that all look like super, super similar. Like I don't, I'm not gonna alternate skeins because it's not a sweater and there's broken up parts of this, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem because they look great. <clears throat> if I was making a sweater, I would alternate skeins. I promise. Um, my other colorway is La Bienna May, and hopefully you're able to see those little um, flecks of like fuchsia, purple. Um, it really picks up on like the mauviness of this. And I've got both of those labels right here from where they were last time, but they're Suburban Stitchers label, and the color was Predictability. And here's the La Bienna May skein. It was cool to get this yarn because this yarn is sold in Paris. Uh, and again, I don't know what the color of this is because I can't quite understand the label. So <laughs> I need to compare, like, there's a word right here, and I need to compare that to the online shop and see if I can pick out what's the colorway and what's not. Um, if I didn't already say it, because I don't think I did, Woolberry Wrap. So this is the Woolberry Wrap. Jen knit hers in Woolberry Yarn from Woolberry Yarn Co. So aptly named the Woolberry Wrap. But yeah, that's in testing stages and it should be out very soon. Okay, let's talk about designs. So I have a design that has been in testing for a couple weeks now and I've been so quiet about it. My testers have not made a peep. They are so great. And this is a brand new batch of testers for me because this is a crocheted pattern. I haven't had a crocheted pattern come out since last summer. Um, my very first pattern, published pattern that was a paid for pattern was the float tote. And float tote, I don't know why I said that so weird. And that's a crocheted bag. Um, actually, I can show it to you because that's what I have my Woolberry wrap in. And I have it, uh, I've got my project on top, but if I take my project off, you can see that it's got these little like buckets for my yarn. And you can see I'm almost running low on that one. But that's the float tote. That was my first pattern and my only, well, not only, I've had a couple other patterns come out. I did a whole collection, a back to school collection um, in August, I believe. And those were all these tiny little crocheted items. You can use your sugar and cream or Knit Picks Dishy or um, Peaches and Cream or Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. You can use your cotton, um, little bits of cotton to make these cute little uh, things for back to school. Um, I'll link that so that you can go look at those. But those are my only crocheted patterns so far. Everything else has been knit. And I really wanted to get back into crocheted patterns. I had this design idea in my head for a while and I, it took me a while to get there. So um, this is so exciting. <laughs> so I can, I'm excited to start talking about it. I'm gonna tease you for about, about a week longer. Um, but yes, it's gonna be a crocheted, um, do I wanna tell you? I don't know, I, I'm not sure if I wanna tell you yet, but it's a crocheted pattern. Let me show you the yarn. So 
when this, this is going to be a collaboration with a yarn dyer. And when this dyer contacted me, I had to read the message like so many times to make sure it was true. <laughs> like, are they actually asking me if I can design a pattern with their yarn? Like, what? I don't feel like I, I was just so amazed. I was so excited. So this is going to be a collaboration with Diane of Suburban Stitcher. And obviously I like her yarn. Um, I'm working on my Woolberry wrap out of Suburban Stitcher. And so it's going to be a very Suburban Stitcher like next few weeks. But this, like, like I said, Diane is an amazing dyer and she works with designers that you know, like so well known, like she was just working with Hohi Locatelli and what's the magazine? Why am I forgetting? Uh, interpretations. She's got a design that's come out in Interpretations with Vera Valamaki and Hohi Locatelli who put those designs together. And so when she asked if I had any like crochet designs um, in mind and she would love to have her yarn in something crocheted because that's not always seen um, as much in the indie dyed yarn um, business. I think it is a lot more like in the last couple of years, but it's just not as common. So anyway, I'm going to stop gushing and show you the yarn. Um, this is going to be a very large thing. I'm just, I think I'm having fun teasing you a little bit about what it is. So I'm just going to tease you for one more week. But these are the colors that she sent me. And they're going to look so beautiful together. Now, you can tell that this is fingering weight yarn. And if you are a crocheter and you're um, a little bit intimidated, intimidated by using fingering weight yarn, don't worry. You use a really large hook um, to get a very loose fabric. And so this pattern actually moves pretty quickly. I think my testers have been working for two weeks and one has completed theirs already. And several more are very close. Nobody is like at the very beginning, like they're all moving through it pretty quickly. So that's encouraging, I think. Crochet is a really good way. Like if you have yarn in your stash, what I'm imagining for this pattern is that you have two colors you love in your stash and maybe you have to go out and get the main color to match that. So maybe you can't fully use stash, but you can use um, two things that you love and then find something that connects them. This is how they're going to be used in this order. So yeah, I, I'm so excited about this. So the colors that she sent me, this one is coal. This one is from her peach collective and there's not a label on here. Um, so I'm trying to remember exactly what this one was called. I'll look it up and I'll put it on the screen, but you can see it's got that, those dark flecks in it. So it really looks good with the coal. And this one is Nudie Patootie, which hopefully it is picking up on the screen, but it's not bare, almost, which is why it's called Nudie Patootie, but it's definitely got speckles. It's almost got like peach on it, and which is why it goes great with the Peach Collective. So I'm so excited. I'm gonna wind these up tonight so I can get started um, working the sample that's gonna be at DFW Fiberfest. Did I even say that? Yeah, so Diane is gonna be vending at DFW Fiberfest three weeks from now, I think. And I am gonna get this sample made up real quick so that it can be in your in her booth. And then if you're there, you can go look at it, see if you like these colors, wanna make it in a different color. Um, it's a very beginner friendly pattern. So if you only know a few crochet stitches, don't worry, it's super easy, it's very repetitive. I really hope you're gonna like it. I will show you, I'm gonna start on it and I will show it to you next week, but I don't know, I think I like, I think I like doing the tease right now, it's, it's fun. So look out for a crocheted pattern coming soon, um, a collaboration with um, my designs, Love and Stitches, and Diane of Suburban Stitcher. I'm so excited. Okay, I have something new on my YouTube channel. You might have seen it already, but I have my first tutorial and I am making a playlist of tutorials because I'm planning to add more to them. 
um, to that playlist as time goes on. So anytime I put up a new tutorial, I will feature it for a couple days at the top of my page and then I'll put it into that playlist. So hopefully you can find them very easily. But this tutorial is for making progress keepers. So actually, let me show you something else first. So when I went to Disney, I was keeping an eye out for charms. Um, on my socks, you saw, let me show you again, that um, Mickey ice cream sandwich on a stick. That was a charm that I found at Disneyland and I turned it into a progress keeper. Now, you might be wondering why would you, like charms come on lobster claws, why would you take that off? And that's because I hate lobster claws. <laughs> Let me show you. Lobster claws are these fasteners here. And for most people, they're probably 100% fine. For me, they're like impossible. <laughs> I don't know. Like I just have a hard time like opening them. I mean, obviously I just did it. But I found that it frustrating to like open them and then also to get them around stitches. Even this one, which is a larger size, I, I don't know. It just... It was too much of a pain for me and I wasn't using them very much because if I got it clipped onto my stitches properly, then I didn't want to move them because it was that much of a pain. Like, is this just a me problem? <laughs> I don't know. But I wanted to learn how to change this lobster claw into a an earring back, which looks like this. Sorry about that. I My mom called me. She always calls me... Um, on our way home from work, or I'll call her on my way home from work, and who, whenever we connect, we just talk all the way home. Um, usually, I mean, I always put my phone on do not disturb, and then I have to open the camera. This is so, I don't know, maybe you don't care, but I have to open the camera app without unlocking my phone, and my face unlocks my phone because I have an iPhone 10, and so I literally have to like, click the screen and then like duck out of the way and then hit the camera app so that it doesn't unlock the phone. Because if it unlocks, then do not disturb doesn't work and phone calls and messages will come through while I'm recording. So I must have accidentally unlocked my phone. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, what I was talking about, I think was these earring backs or lever backs and there we go. So these are, um larger than the lobster claws, but they're also so much easier to open and put on stitches. See how it's like a hook there? So this I'm able to like hook on a stitch and get it on there really easily and then close it. So I just, it's a personal preference. I really like these fasteners and the person who introduced them to me was my friend, Rebecca. So she saw me that I, she saw that I was struggling with those lobster claws and frustrated and she was like, we can change those, don't you know that? I'm like, no, I didn't know that. So for a long time, many months I think, I would get a new, I would buy a new progress keeper and I would bring it to my friend Rebecca and at night and she would use her tools and she would change them for me. And <laughs> she did that for a while and she was like, I can teach you, Natalie, if you um, want to learn. And I'm like, uh, no, I, I'll hate changing them. It'll be too annoying. I'll get frustrated like a real brat. <laughs> but Rebecca was so patient and so nice. And eventually I decided I was ready to learn. And so in like five minutes, she taught me how to change them. So now look at this. I've got these cute progress keepers I just picked up at Disney World. So what I actually did is I took this charm here, which is one charm, right? It's got the gloves and everything and the Mickey face. And I was able to turn that into three charms, three progress keepers. And I have a tutorial on how to do this. So if you're interested, I'll put the link below um, or actually you can easily navigate on the YouTube page um, to that tutorial, which is called how to, Ch how to turn any charm into a progress keeper. Um, yeah, so I have a ton of charms that I'm gonna change that I got at Disney World, I'm gonna show you. They had a whole like thing of them. Um, what was the store? It was in Hollywood, no, Epcot. 
I can't remember if it was an Epcot or Hollywood Studios, but the store was called Mouse Gears. So if you are going there, maybe you can look that up. It always changes where they have these charms because I would get them at Disneyland in a certain shop and then the next time I went, they wouldn't be there anymore. So I just kind of keep an eye out for them, but I've got this one, which is like the whole Mickey crew. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Maybe not. I always see people doing that. I don't really know what they're doing. Oh, I also got Minnie with her gloves like that. This one was probably my favorite one. I knew I had to have this one. This is like the Mickey ears, but Minnie with a bow. And then this one is the Epcot like world with Mickey ears. And then this one is a Mickey hat. So cute. So I'm gonna take the lobster claws and also there's like an additional charm on here. They actually use those for pricing. So like green is one price, yellow is one price. Um, so I'm gonna take that off as well cause I don't really like that dangling on there. And I'm gonna change those all into progress keepers. So I have my first tutorial up and you can go see how to do the same thing if you have some charms or maybe a necklace or anything with a hole or a loop in it, you can put some, put a jump ring and a fastener on there and it's a progress keeper. And I recorded two tutorials, but I've only released one. I'm gonna release the next one next Tuesday. Um, and that one's gonna be on using beads to make stitch markers and progress keepers. So if changing them, changing the fastener is not something that really interested you, but making your own is interesting, I'll have that ready for you guys next week. You know what is so amazing is that it's almost seven o'clock and the sun is still out. Doesn't that make you so happy? Like it completely changes my um, attitude and I think that's like a real thing, you know, like the darkness, it not being light, you're not getting to get outside in the sun really affects my mood. And every single year in the winter time, I'm like, here we go, seasonal affective disorder. Not that I um, think that I'm like diagnosed with that or anything, but it, but it still affects my mood um, pretty significantly. And same thing when the sun starts to stay out longer, as soon as the time changes, man, I just feel so much better. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy about that. But the last few things I have are a little bit of chatter. I'm gonna talk about my first session of Knitting and Crochet Club and my nails, in case you noticed, and also my Disney trip and some struggles that I had there with knitting. So let me make sure that was it that I wanted to talk about. Yep, so let's talk about Knitting Club. So I had my first, um, session with my new knitting and crochet club um, members and I probably will often call it knitting club but I mean knitting and crochet club I, it just rolls off the tongue a little easier I think but um yeah it was so great I've got seven fourth and fifth graders I've got four girls and three boys I have five crocheters and two knitters so it was a lot of fun yesterday um they were super excited. I was able to give them their new yarn and needles and hooks. And then I showed them the yarn that we're gonna use later on, but told them that I was hanging on to it for a couple more weeks. So what I did is I got them a big skein of acrylic yarn from Hobby Lobby. I think it's called, I love this yarn. And I told them, this is your practice yarn. You can use as much of this as you want. You can, um, if you get a knot in it, cut it and start fresh. Like you can not run out of this yarn. <laughs> and then the other yarn is a cotton yarn and we're gonna use that to make a coaster. Um, I just thought a coaster, we're only gonna meet for four sessions. So I thought a coaster would be the perfect size and also a simple shape um, to learn how to knit and crochet. And then I told them, you know, they were like, well, what's a coaster? <laughs> and I showed them what a coaster was. And um, I was like, I know that you may not want or need a coaster, but we're practicing making a square or a rectangle. And so many things are squares or rectangles, scarves, blankets, pretty much 
anything you can think of, you can probably make it out of a square. Um, I've had girls make like bags, all kinds of stuff. So they were super excited. It went really well. Um, they just learned how to make a slip knot, which takes a while. If you've ever taught anyone to do a slip knot, it's, it's like they don't get it, they don't get it, and then it clicks. Um, so they learned that and then the crocheters learned how to do a chain and they're kind of, you know, figuring out how they want to hold their yarn. And the knitters learned to do the long tail cast on. Um, I used to teach, um, when I would do beginning knitting lessons, I used to teach the knitted cast on, um, but everyone always struggled with it. And it was good in the long run because they kind of learned how to knit as they did the knitted cast on, they just didn't realize it. But at the same time, I've never since used a knitted cast on. Like I don't ever use it. And so I have started teaching the long tail cast on and you would think that people would think it was hard, but actually kids catch on to it super fast. So long tail is my new method of casting on to teach beginners and they pick it up just fine. So next week we'll learn the knit stitch and we'll learn single crochet and I have, two girls coming to help me that have been in my previous knitting and crochet clubs. They both know how to knit and crochet very proficiently. Um, they're the two girls that are knitting socks. So yeah, they're gonna come and help me out um, just for that day, cause I don't wanna intimidate. Um, I feel like if there's too many people watching, especially your peers, it can be more harmful than helpful. So they're just gonna come for that one session and help and then we'll have two more weeks together where we'll actually make the coasters. So I'm excited for it. And I also calculated that I have enough time in the school year to do another four weeks with a second set of kids and that should take care of just about everyone that wanted to be in the club. So I'm happy about that. The other thing is <laughs> I caved and I got my nails done. So let me talk about that because Watching myself back when I was editing, um, I had two feelings. One, why are you being so dramatic about your nails? And two, like, why are you being so dramatic about, I don't know. I got, it's funny because I did get some like comments about things that I could do for my natural nails, which are all really good comments. Like I definitely went through those and considered them and then and actually my nails were doing pretty good without the dip oh sorry if you didn't get to watch last time um i've had dip powder or next gen whatever you want to call it nails for about a year and a half and i decided it was not fitting into my schedule anymore i thought maybe for the health of my nails i wanted to take a break from it or maybe stop doing it and so i had my next gen dip like coat removed and just polished my nails and I knew it was going to be kind of annoying for a while because it would take some months for my nails to grow back out and be strong again um but actually they did better than I thought um by about the second week they were like stronger than I thought but I was just not happy with the way that they looked um I painted my nails like probably every third day. Like not a new, like not a new color, but like touched them up and or like did a full coat and another coat of top coat. Um, I just, I really like my nails to look nice. And I found that I was constantly thinking about them. Is that crazy or what? Please tell me <laughs> that you have something else that is beauty related that you focus in on because I'm feeling a little bit vain and that makes me feel a little bit bad. Like, but at the same time, I was like, I am tired of looking down at my nails and not being happy with them. And I was even looking at other people's nails and being like, oh, they have dip or they have gel and like, looks so good. So after 13 days, <laughs> you guys, I was tired of it. You know what I was really tired of is um, 
my nails were, um, while they were stronger than I thought they were gonna be, they were very weak, of course, because they had been filed down. And I kept getting snagged on my yarn. Come on, I cannot have that. I cannot be getting snagging my yarn. And also the other thing that did me in was when I was putting on like um, exercise leggings, like for Pilates, I would have to, even jeans, I would have to like pinch my, the, the parts of my pants with my fingertips because if I like actually just like went like this and pulled up, like put my pants on, <laughs> it was gonna break my nails. And I was like, you know what, I'm done. I think I remember why I started getting dip nails in the first place, which was to not have to worry about them or think about my nails for two weeks. And I just decided that for me, it was worth the time, which is like about an hour and a half, probably every two weeks, worth the time and worth the money to get them again. And if I change my mind again, I can take them off again. <laughs> so anyway, please make me feel better because I feel like silly. That's like the only word for it. I feel silly. But okay, so since I had, hopefully, maybe I'll put a timestamp in here way before so that if you want to skip this, you can skip it. But since I had gone almost two weeks without any coating, my nails had changed, like, they, most of them actually still look pretty good, but like my pointer fingers, especially I think because we use those so much, had I had had to cut them down more than the others. So the lady, I had not had her before, but she said, let's put tips on them to make them all even. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, I really don't want them long. And she's like, yeah, let's put tips on them. Like, okay, I like to indulge the, the nail techs because one, they're so awesome because they sit there and work on your nails for an hour. And two, they're creative people too. And I feel like I can understand that. So like they really want to make your nails look beautiful. And so I was like, okay, let's do tips. So she puts the tips on and you can see they're pretty long. They're much longer than I would normally get. Um, so she did it and then she didn't cut them down and like very much, she cut them down, but she didn't cut them down as much as I probably would have um, wanted them to be. And I was like, well, you know what? Let's go for it. I I feel like being a different person this week because I really do feel like a different person with these super long nails. Um, I also went for a more rounded shape than a square shape, and I think I'm liking that a lot more. It's a lot more natural. So enough about my nails. <laughs> They are very important to me. Can you tell? They're they're kind of important to my knitting because then when I look down at my nails, they're like look pretty and they're not snagging and whatever. I'm I'm being a brat, I think, a little bit. Okay, let's talk about one more thing, which is Disney World. I had such a great time. Um, we were there on my birthday, which was a lot of fun. I got to spend. Um, Epcot or my birthday at Epcot what I got to spend my birthday at Epcot which if you haven't been to Disney World this was our first time if you haven't been there before and you don't know about Epcot Epcot is um it's a one of the parks and it has rides at the beginning which is all I don't know if they call it Tomorrowland I think that's in um, Magic Kingdom but it's like Future World I think it's Future World so this is all very futuristic uh there's like a space ride there's a ride about earth it's really cool and then you walk past that and there's this giant like circle that's all these different countries and every section has buildings restaurants food drinks that are representative of different countries and it's super cool so the first place we went was norway because we had fast passes to ride the Frozen Ride, which was amazing. My husband's favorite princess is Anna from Frozen. And so we had to go on the Frozen Ride. And then we went to the Norwegian bakery, which is called Kringla, I think. And I had a really, really good pastry. Um, their pastries are not very sweet, except for the toppings. So that was really good. Um, but yeah, so there's Japan, China, we ate in Japan and China. Um, 
Germany, got a giant pretzel in Germany. I should put a picture of that in because that was the biggest pretzel I've ever had. Um, France, Italy. Um, I don't know if they call it England or just the UK because there were, oh, this is the coolest part. The people that work in the countries are from the country. You guys, it is so, so cool. So everyone that works at Disney World wears a name tag and it says where they're from. And we were in Florida, right? So most people are like Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Not most people, but a lot of people, different parts of Florida. Or it'll say like the college if they're in the Disney college program. But everybody in, just about everybody in Epcot is from different places. If they work in the country, they're from that country. So it'll say like Osaka, Japan or wherever they're from. It's so cool. And then they also have these tags below their badges that say what languages they speak um, other than English. English is not on there, but if they speak anything other than English, it's on there. One of the guys we met had like four languages, which was super cool. Um, did I miss any countries? Canada. And Canada, I had uh, maple popcorn, which was so good. That was a special treat for the um, flower and garden festival, I think, that was going on. And the United States is super lame. Sorry. The rest of the all the other parks are the United States. So the United States kind of lame in Epcot. Um, but that was really fun. I really enjoyed that on my birthday because we got to have yummy food and drinks and it was a lot of fun. All right, I'm not gonna take you through every day of our trip because the sun is setting and this is not a Disney World podcast, but if you're looking for one, I would suggest the, um, oh my gosh, Disney Food Blog is a whole channel. We watched like 20 videos from her before we left and there's all kinds of things about rides, food, what to bring if you have a toddler, what to do if you have a baby. I mean, like a million, videos on Disney World and I would definitely suggest you go look at that but we were able to go to all the parks twice um, on our six-day trip there see my brother-in-law my husband's brother he works there and um it was a blast I think we're definitely going back we got annual passes um because his brother is working there we know we're going to visit at least two more times maybe three times maybe four times we we really liked it so um that was a blast but i wanted to tell you about knitting at disney so i specifically where did it go got this look at this light i'm so sorry i'll talk quick i got this bag um for going to disney and it was perfect i clipped this onto my backpack the whole time and while I was walking around, it didn't bother me one bit. It just hung by my side. And then when I was ready to knit in line, I just opened it up and had my knitting right there. The first three days I had zero problems. I, I mean, I literally had this on the outside of my bag. They would open it up. They would look and see that it was knitting and they would, they would pass me through. You have to go through security. Um, so here's what the problem was. I had the same needles every day. I probably went through security like uh, three times a day for sure. And then one day we went in and out of a bunch of hotels and every time you come back in to get on the tram, you go through security. So we probably went through like eight times that day, no problems. Then for some reason on the fourth day, um, somebody said to me, one of the security officers said, like closed up my bag and was like, I'll pretend I didn't see that, like kind of joking and I was like, what? And then that same day, back at the same park, which was Hollywood Studios, the another a different person said, now have you been into the parks today? And I'm like, oh, we've been in and out three times already. And she's like, well, you know, let me just ask somebody about those knitting needles because I'm just not sure and I wanna know for myself. And I was like, okay, like my attitude was fine at the time because I thought I'm getting these in. And then somebody, you know, superior comes over, um, like actually like a superior person, not like, I'm not saying they had a complex or anything. And they came over and they said, I'm sorry, but you can't bring those in there. I can't remember exactly what they said, but like, they're a threat. 
And then the lady that was, that was originally checking was literally going like this, like checking them. And so I immediately handled it poorly because that's what you do when something is your passion, right? No, you shouldn't do that. I, I had, I was upset. And so I just like stopped talking, which is not, I did not handle it with grace very well. Um, I did say I've already been in the parks for four days with these, which is like, that was not gonna help me at all. So the guy said, you need to go take these to your car or you need to go check them in at the front and you can pick them up on your way out. And I said, okay, we'll check them in at the front. And as we're walking to do that, he comes back up to me and says, I will let you keep them for today. Just don't get them out. I'm like what kind of torture is that? <laughs> You're going to let me keep them, but I can't knit with them. So yeah, I pouted for a little while and bless my husband because he knows how important knitting is to me. And he was like, it's fine. Like, it's going to be fine. Because um, I also just, I don't like to do the wrong thing. And so it also kind of jar, like made me feel bad that I didn't feel like I was breaking a rule. You know what I mean? Like, show me where it says no knitting needles. <laughs> TSA allows it. But my husband had a good point and he said, if you had, if somebody got poked by these in line or on a ride, Disney might be liable if I was a psycho and I made Disney be liable for these. But anyway, so I started brainstorming, right? Because I'm like, no, I have to have knitting at, the parks to wait in line like we didn't have to wait in line for too long but like even 15 to 30 minutes like i want to have something to do and still be able to talk and look around right so this is what i did so i did not try to bring my needles back to hollywood studios i didn't like disney security is very serious and i love disney and i don't want to be on their list so when we went back to Hollywood Studios, I didn't bring knitting, but for the other parks that I'd had no problems with, this is what I did. I put these in a uh, needle cozy and I didn't have one with me. So I took a, um, I had this like travel nail file thing um, and it had little compartments. It was like kind of like a padded thing. It literally looked like a needle cozy and it had little compartments for a nail file and a nail clipper. So I slid the needles into that and then wrapped it up and it looked like a needle cozy. And then I strategically put it in my bag so that the needles were at the bottom. Now, of course, they open your bag, look through, feel around, but when they didn't ha have this to look at, there was no perceived threat. Now, I also followed through for that on that in the park, and every time I put my needles away, I put them in the, in the co uh, cozy so that it would be safe. It, say that a kid like ran into my bag or something, I don't want them to get hurt, of course. And I don't want to get hurt on a ride either. So here's my advice for you. <laughs> if you're going to Disney, you probably won't have a problem. It's, it just depends on the person. Um, knitting needles are not outright banned, um, but anything that the security um, officers perceive as dangerous, they can tell you not to bring. Um, so several things I learned that going forward, I will one strategy is to have a needle cozy, which I have some, so I will definitely bring that next time because I want to be able to knit socks. They're the, one of the only things I can knit and not look at, and it's very portable. Um, second thing that I think would have worked just fine is to have wooden needles. I do not like knitting on wooden needles um, as small as a one, um, so that might not be something that I do, but I think that that would have not been an issue because wooden needles tend to be not as sharp as metal. Plus, if somebody runs into you with wooden needles, they're probably gonna break before they poke their skin. <laughs> and then the third thing, which I think this is what I'm actually gonna do next time, I don't know, we'll see, is bring crochet. Um, a crochet hook, whether it's metal or plastic, is not going to be perceived as a, a threatening tool. Or if it is, I can literally say like, take the crochet hook and I'll take my yarn with me and we'll all be happy. Um, whereas knitting, I would have to take it off of the um, uh, needle, which I would have done if I needed to. Um, next time I will be prepared to be turned away so that if I 
do get turned away, I won't be so upset and not handle it so perfectly. Um, but yeah, have you guys ever had a problem with knitting needles? I've never, ever, ever, ever anywhere on a plane, any kind of travel. I take my knitting needles into sporting events all the time. Um, even, I think it's Michigan's stadium where you literally cannot take a bag, like a any bag, even clear, anything, nothing. And I carried the yarn and project in my hand no problem. So I was super surprised and I've been going to Disneyland for um, over a year very consistently and I had no problems with security there either. So I'm hoping it was just a fluke and now I'm better prepared. And hopefully if you are going to Disney World or somewhere like that, now you can be prepared. Maybe you can have a backup crochet project or wooden knitting needles. You can just swap them out real fast and take the $10 loss on the needles. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I think that's all I wanted to share with you today. Um, hopefully next week, because it will only be one week and I don't have a trip to talk about, I will be able to get back to that 30 minutes that I like to have for you guys. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy these longer episodes. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Bye.